morning, church. My name is John, and I'm going to preach the word of God to you this morning. Thank you very much, my brother, for reading the scripture. So today, if you have your Bibles, turn to the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 13. The Gospel of Matthew, chapter 13. And the title of the sermon today is the parable of the sower. So the passage that you will be looking at today is Matthew 13. And I will be beginning reading from the first verse to the 24th verse. It says, That same day, Jesus went out of the house and sat by the lake. Such a large crowd gathered around him that he got into a boat and sat in it, while all the people stood on the shore. Then he told them many things in parables, saying, A farmer went out to sow his seed. As he was scattering the seed, some fell along the path, and the bears came and ate it up. Some fell on rocky places where it did not have much soil. It sprang up quickly because the soil was shallow. But when the sun came up, the plants were scorched, and they withered because they had no root. Other seed fell among thorns, which grew up and choked the plants. Still other seed fell on the good soil, where it produced a crop a hundred, sixty, or thirty times what was sown. Whoever has ears, let them hear. The disciples came to him and asked, Why do you speak to the people in parables? He replied, Because the knowledge of the secrets of the kingdom of heaven has been given to you, but not to them. Whoever has will be given more and they will have an abundance. Who does not have, even what they have, will be taken from them. This is why I speak to them in parables. Though seeing, they do not see. Though hearing, they do not hear or understand. In them is fulfilled the prophecy of Isaiah. You will be ever hearing, but never understanding. You will be ever seeing but never persevering. For this people's heart has become callous. They hardly hear with their ears and they have closed their eyes. Otherwise they might see with their eyes, hear with their ears, understand with their hearts and turn and I will hear them. But blessed are your eyes because they see and your ears because they hear. For truly, I tell you, many prophets and righteous people long to see what you see, but they did not see it. And to hear what you hear, but they did not hear it. Listen to what the parable of the sower means. When anyone hears the message about the kingdom and does not understand it, the evil one comes and snatches away what was sown in their heart. This is a seed sown along the path. The seed falling on rocky ground refers someone who hears the word and at once receives it with joy. But since they have no root, they last only for a short time. When trouble, persecution comes because of the word, they quickly fall away. The seed falling among thorns refers to someone who hears the word, but the worries of his life and the deceitfulness of wealth choke the world, making it unfruitful. But the seed falling on good soil refers to someone who hears the word and understands it. This is the one who produces a crop yielding a hundred, sixty, or thirty times what was sown. Let us 
pray. Most gracious Father, we thank you for this morning. Father, thank you for bringing us here into your house. We pray that, Father, as we are going to hear your word, Father, may you open our minds. May you give us understanding. Father, we ask you that your Holy Spirit will lead us as we are going to hear your word. And, Father, give us all understanding. And, Father, transform our life with your word that we will never be the same. Bless this sermon. Bless everyone here. In Jesus Christ's name, I pray. Amen. This is a parable of our Lord Jesus Christ, himself, the preacher, the greatest preacher ever in the world. And Jesus, in his time, he used to teach in parables. He used to teach his audience to help them to follow what he is trying to tell them or to let them understand for his communicating. In this parable, Jesus did not only tell the parable, he also explained it. If you look from verses 18 to 20 to 23. So let me use this as an illustration for you, uh, because last month I was in Africa, Ghana, and when I was studying this scripture, it gave me so a picture what happened in Ghana, uh, because we have a project, and the project is called Sow and Grow. It's not only cultivating crops, but also sowing the word of God into people's hearts as Jesus is trying to tell us here. So maybe you have already heard about this project, and the project is for discipleship training, training people in discipleship, and also training them in modern agriculture practices. And this project, our vision is to see that lives have been transformed by God through discipleship training and tutoring in modern agriculture practices, resulting in an increase in the kingdom resources and decrease in poverty. This is what we are doing in Ghana. So I would like to show you some videos on the screen, very, very short one. Talk about the path. When Jesus talked about the sower who scattered the seeds and some fell, on the path. Maybe you will not get it. But if you are in the farm's field and you see this path is, I don't know, maybe before I was born. And people are walking every day on this path. And it's very hard than even a stone. And I don't see how a seed can fall on it and maybe enter the soil to grow. So, Maybe you can see some of the path here. Yes, this is uh, the farm field. This is where we park our vehicle. And you see that there is a path. See, this is the path. This is only what I want to show you. And this has been there for many, many years. And people have been working on it, working on it. And so, how the farmers, they do is that they scatter the seeds. So some will fall on a good ground, some will fall on the rocky ground, some will fall also on this path. So I was thinking, how can it grow if it falls on this path? Surely, bells will come and then eat it. And this is what Jesus is trying to tell us. Because whatever you preach the gospel, people will accept Christ. And there are people who are going to reject Jesus because of their heart and their heart. So Jesus gives such an illustration that if it falls on this path, there is no chance it's going to get to grow. 
So this is one thing I want to show you. He talked also about the different kind of the soil. We had a harvest of uh, beans, soya beans. We had also a harvest of maize. And if you see, people are harvesting, but there are different, uh, different soils on the land. You see here, it was very nice. But if you go to the other parts, it's not a uh, very fertile field. So there are different, though the same place, we have rocky places, we have thorns, and we have also a fertile land. So as we are doing these agricultural practices, we also preach the word of God to people. Last time when I went to Ghana, there were three people who accepted Christ. Now I say, this is wonderful. So our break time, when we get some food to eat, we used to preach, and people accept Christ, and we try to have the discipleship training for them. Now also support them with this agriculture. But this time, there was also a preaching. Uh, if you can show for us, it started from here. You see, some of them are eating, and I really love it, because this is really natural. Uh, so I try to take my Bible and search for Luke, where I'm going to preach, because it was 23rd, the next day as 24th. So I share the word of God with them. And most of them accepted Christ. Praise the Lord. And this is the work of God. So I think God gave us this opportunity as all Christians, all believers, to go and share the gospel to all over the world. It's not only here, not only Africa, but everywhere as you have the opportunity, my brothers and sisters, please share the gospel. So let's come back to Jesus' passage. So from this parable, the four reactions the seed encountered on different soils, as I told you. There are four ways people respond to the gospel. Anywhere. Some people will accept Christ. Some people will reject him. So don't be offended. Don't be shy that if you, if you present the gospel, people are not going to hear. But they reject the good news. It's very good because it saved our life and it's so powerful. So, the first one I would like to talk today is unreceptive because they are hardening their hearts. People don't accept Christ because they have already hardened their hearts. They don't want to hear the good news. And there are people, emotionally responders, but become unfaithful. They fall away. Also, unwilling to pay the price because they are too busy with their own agenda, so they become unfruitful. But what about the faithful servants? That become wonderful and productive. They hear the word willingly, they understood the word of God and they responded with true commitment. Their lives changed. They've been transformed and they bear fruits. So the point of the parable is not the sower, the one who is going to sow it. It's not the seeds. It's about the soils. It's about the soil. So as the the farmer scattered the seeds. The, the, the growth of the plant doesn't de depend on the seeds, doesn't depend on the, the sower, but which soil? Is it going to fall on the path? That is so hard. People have been working there for many years. There is no chance for that plant to grow. But what about the good soil? It rarely get better, and then be productive. So the soil, it represents the heart 
of people. The soil represents the heart of people. So wherever the word of God proclaim, the issue is the heart of people. Will people hearts accept the word of God or will they reject the word of God? So here with this parable, the first thing we see is from verse 1 through 9. In this passage, Jesus tells us about four types of soil. Number one, the seeds that fell on the path and were eaten by birds. It's the same thing as preach the word of God to someone and Satan come and snatch the word from that person. Because the person has already hardened his heart. He doesn't believe the word of God. Second, the seeds that fell on the rocky soil, it grew quickly and later was scorched by the sun. Thirdly, the seeds that fell in the thorns and couldn't grow. And the fourth, the seeds that fell on the ground, soil, and became fruitful. Jesus said this in parable, let anyone who has ears listen. Jesus wants you to pay attention to this sermon this morning. Remember, Jesus warned the Pharisees against having evil hearts. He wants us to have ears and hearts that want to learn from him. We should always listen to what Jesus is trying to tell us. Do you want to hear from Jesus this morning? I think so. That is why you are here, to hear the word of God that can change your life, that can transform you. Well, then we must listen what Jesus is trying to tell us this morning. Jesus is trying to teach us through his parable. But why parables? Why Jesus didn't go direct to the point by speaking in parables? Well, the second, Jesus gives us a purpose of also the parable from verses 10 to 17. Jesus' disciples wanted to know why Jesus was teaching the people in parables. Jesus is saying, you are my disciples. You understand what I am saying to you because you want to understand it. And God has given you the power to understand it. You have made your mind to understand the word of God. That is why God has given you the power to be here to understand the word of God and to apply it every day in your life. Because you are ready to hear the word of God. But there are people, they don't want it. Though they will hear, but they will never, never understand because God has not given them that power for understanding. He said, the secrets of the kingdom of heaven have been given to you to know. That is, they have been given by whom? By God. But others do not understand it because they do not want to understand it. And God didn't give them the power to understand. Some people don't understand it because they don't really love God and his ways. So their hearts are hardened against God. Let us see what Jesus says here. Whoever has more will be given to him. He's saying, if you open your heart that God is what God is teaching you, God will teach you more and more and more. But if you harden your heart, you have no power to understand it. Jesus said that Isaiah prophesied about this situation many, many years ago. He said, their hearts are closed, their ears are hard of hearing, and they have shut their eyes. Of course, these people have shut off and what God is telling them, they have spiritual hearts which are hard. One pastor 
gave us an illustration. He said, how can you talk to a dead person? He cannot hear because he is dead. A dead person, if you say, hello, come here, he will never hear anything. I think it's the same in spirituality. If someone can live, can have work, can have family, but in spirituality, the person is dead. How can he hear? They have spiritual ears, which is deaf. They have spiritual eyes, which is shut. They cannot see. They have decided not to learn the ways of God. So when Jesus teaches parables, those who truly want to learn from Jesus can learn by the power of the Holy Spirit. That is our helper. He will help you. He will give you understanding of the word of God. So anytime you read the Bible, call him and say, Holy Spirit, please lead me. Give me understanding. This is his role. He's going to help you. And I think we must have a soft spiritual heart, not a hardened heart. Hearing spiritual ears and open spiritual eyes. Are you open to being taught by God? Are you open to the words of Jesus in your life? Are you open to the leading of God's Holy Spirit? If you really want to learn from God, we ask him, and he will do it. He will help us. My brothers and sisters, you know, Jesus wants us to know more about him and his teaching. He wants us to have the same mind as Christ's mind. So we must ask the Holy Spirit to teach us. But we thank God here in this particular parable, Jesus gave us explanation. We will see this from verse 18 to 23. He tells us the details what about a parable means. Let me read from verses 18 to 23. And Jesus said, Listen then to what the parable of the sower means. When anyone hears the message about a kingdom and does not understand it, the evil one comes and snatches away what was sown in their heart. This is the seed sown along the path. The seed falling on rocky ground refers to someone who hears the word and once receives it with joy. But since they have no root, they last only for a short time. When trouble, persecution comes because of the word, they quickly fall away. The seed falling among the thorns refers to someone who hears the word, but the worries of his life and the deceitful of wealth choke the world, making unfruitful. But the seed falling on the good soil refers to someone who hears the word and understands it. I think it refers to Christians. It refers to you and to refer to those who are here. Because you understand the word of God. That is why you are here. You have interest. This is the one who produces a crop. Yielding a hundred, sixty, or thirty times what was already sown. And then as I see the, 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 the farm field, you know, like one bean, one soya bean. And you see a lot of where you were harvesting. Just one but you can get more than 20 seeds on one. This is what I think Jesus wants us to be productive. As a Christian, it's not the salvation for us alone, but also to go and preach. That is why I love IBC Church. You have people from all over different nationalities. So we go where you come from and share the gospel. Because Jesus has given us a mission to go all over the world and preach the gospel. And he will be with us till the last day. Hallelujah. So, so okay, let's look at the fourth kind of soil in Jesus' parable. The sea is that fair on the path were eaten by bears. Jesus said, these people who don't understand the word of God 
because the devil confuses them that they heard about God is not true. Whatever they heard, they think, and I know many people. I know many people uh, because I used to speak to them. Some people, they will hate you. Some people, they don't want to hear something at all because it's not true. It's somebody who wrote the Bible. But for us, it's a power of God. So the seed that fell on the ground, Jesus said, these are the people who believe in the message first, but later do not because they are not committed to the things go badly with them. I have such experience too. I was baptized in this church, uh, this, not this building, but the other building. Those who were with me the same day, I think we were four, four people. I met one and said, Brother John, things are not going well. So I'm trying to figure out things. When it gets better, <laughs> I will come to church. <laughs> so I think this is what Jesus is uh, talking. Because it's not that you become believer. Everything is going to go smooth with you. It will be a time of challenge. And how are you going to face it? How are you going to stand? This determines who you are, that you are a real believer. It will not be easy, but with the power and the strength of our Lord Jesus, he will lead you through. So as these people face problems, they turn their back on the teaching of God when things get tough in their lives. These are people who profess to Jesus, but they don't really consider the type of commitment they would take. Jesus said, take your cross and follow me. It's not an easy thing. At times, it's very hard. But Lord, he knows all what you are going through, and he's going to be with you. He say, call me in time of your trouble, and I will be with you. He say, I'm not going to uh, just uh, cut the trouble. But in time of that trouble, I will be with you. I think this is what we call a true believer. But they don't really consider the type of commitment they will take. When they realize things are not always easy, when it comes to following Jesus, they turn their back to the gospel. They had no root in their walk with our Lord Jesus Christ. Thirdly, is the seeds that fell on the thorns. And on this five field, I had a problem because there were a many thorns and some were just going through my, 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 my trousers. It was so hard. And I was thinking, what about the, these little seeds and crops? It will just choke it. No chance to bear fruit. They are so distracted that they make that the most important life, the good news of our Lord Jesus, is most important than the worthy things. All right, now we talk about the fourth soil. That is the last one, the good soil. He said they were blessed because their eyes were seeing and their eyes were hearing. They have the spiritual eyes. They have the spiritual ears. They can see Jesus and they can hear the word of God, and they understand it. This is what because they were believing that Jesus said. It said, many prophets and righteous men long to have seen and heard what the disciples are hearing and seeing, but they didn't have that opportunity. We can see like Abraham. Abraham believed God's promise, but had not yet received it but saw and welcomed them from a distance. So what Jesus is trying to say here is that these are the people who hear the word of God and receive the word of God in their heart. They produce good fruit. The people are blessed by God because they hear and they understand and do the will of God. These are those who have open eyes, hearing ears, a soft health, and hear what God is saying to them. 
Listen carefully here, my sisters and brothers. Jesus says they produce fruit. Some hundred, some sixty, and some thirty times that was sown. I think Jesus wants every believer here to produce fruit. And how do we produce this fruit? I think my question I will ask you this morning is which group of soil do you think you are in? Because in this parable, the only fact that that changes is the soil where the seeds fall. So which soil are you, do you belong to? It's about the condition of our hearts. That matters. Our hearts must be hardened against the word of God. No. You must have a humble heart to receive the word of God. Because we are blessed when we hear, when we understand and obey the word of God. Because not everyone will hear but understand. Because you are born again. And the spirit of God is in you. That is why you are here, hearing and understanding and doing the will of God. And I think we also have to share the word of God to other people. This is our church mission. IBC Munich, we have a mission that God has called us to do. What is IBC mission? Our mission is to show God's love. To tell other people about Jesus Christ. And teach them to love and follow Jesus. This is the, what as a church we do. So as we share the gospel, we must remember that not everyone will respond. Not everyone. My brothers and sisters, you have to get this in your mind. Otherwise, maybe you will feel shy. Or you will think the Lord is not with you. Our job is to sow the seed in people's heart. But leave the rest for God. For that person to accept Christ is not your business. It's the business of the Holy Spirit. He convicts the people to Christ. Where are you with God when it comes to to your heart. Jesus said, I am here. I stand at your door and knock. If you hear my voice and open the door, I will come and eat with you and I will be with you. My sisters and brothers, Jesus is not coming to your house to pull off your, your, your door and pull you out what he's trying to tell you, that as you are hearing the word of God now, if you open your heart, if you soften your heart, he will come and dwell inside you. The Bible tells us that if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For it is your heart that you believe first. And it's with your mouth that you confess that your faith are saved. My statement I will make this morning is that 2,000 years ago, God offered you a gift. The gift no one will ever give you. His son, our Lord Jesus Christ. So right now, as I'm speaking, are you ready? To come before the cross and accept this gift. If you are ready, you can come here and we will pray with you. If you have any questions after the sermon, you can see me, you can see the church leaders, and they will help you with the Bible. Let us pray. Most gracious Father, we thank you so much this morning. Father, you have spoke to us. Thank you for your word. 
Thank you that you have given us understanding. Thank you that you have given us a gift of faith that you believe in you and you can hear from you and we can understand you, Father. I pray that you continue to let your world dwell inside us and, Father, change our life. Let us be fruitful. Let us spread the good news over the world. And, Father, we thank you so much for your salvation. We thank you that you have rescued us. We pray for your protection. We pray for your guidance. We pray that you bless everyone here. In Jesus Christ's name I pray. Amen.